we're live. This is Noreen Samter on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And I've got to get in the mic. And tonight I'm really, really excited because I have Cheryl Gentry on the, the show with me. And uh, I'm just really happy to have her because this woman is so coveted. Everybody wants to speak to her. Everybody wants her as a mentor. She is, you're going to get to hear about that. Like it's, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. Um, so today, like I didn't do much today. I kind of, I did work, but I was still sort of basking and the, that's, basking that, in that's the glow. basking in the glow. That's Cheryl's one of her handles. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm basking in, and you know, when I say that, I think of basking in the glow of love, you know, oh, that yeah. song, yes, yeah, right. Yeah. And so I've been, it's been running through my head all day, like basking in the glow of love and that's who you are. <laughs> But um, so I, you know, I had a sad story today. One of my friends who lives in my neighborhood, her house burnt down. Oh, so sorry to like a, a brownstone, completely, oh. utterly gutted. And she was in, um, she was in Boston when it happened. Oh, no, so no one was home. I think she was there. Yeah, nobody was home, but she has two children. Her business, all her business stuff burnt to the ground. It's oh, just wow. like awful. And uh, yeah, so I'm just really sad about that. And just a lot of stuff going on. I, you know, I did a great event at Yelp last week, which was just awesome. It was so fun. I laughed the whole time. You see, when I'm laughing and doing service, it means things are going really well. Thank right. I, I love laughing. Oh, wow. I love, yes, you therapy. know, when you're doing networking events and people having fun. It was, for me, it was like a comedy hour. It's therapy. It was like entertainment, right? Yeah, yeah. But people, the mission was accomplished because my mission was that people were going to share, connect. And they were going to walk away, um, connect with somebody that they could do business with. And the people did. It was so great. And then also, okay. we had, it was for Nabo. We had people um, register. And I received emails from people saying, Noreen, I'm so pumped for the rest because it was at 9 o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow. Good. I'm so pumped. <laughs> and I, I've got so much energy. Thank you so much. Good. Now, you know, that's, so you affected someone yeah, and helped them so out. Great. Yeah. It was so fun. So I love doing stuff like that and I'm really up to do more. And then I finished um, my, uh, I have this thing called 10 tips, 10 days, mm -hmm. right? So I'm focus grouping that with a bunch of people. And so that just completed. And, and one of the things that the woman, one of the ladies on the, on, on the focus group said her superpower was Athena. Mm. Right? And so she okay. said that when she was, saw herself slipping, she jumped into Athena. She, it pulled her forward. And that's what it's supposed to do. When you create, like a, taking on a new game or creating a new stand for your life, it's supposed to pull you forward. There's mm -hmm. nothing that you really should do. Is you just recognize when you're not being, right? And then it pulls you forward. So that was really great. So the, I've had a great week. And Nina, like I said to you coming here today, I really feel happy in my life. Good. You know, I Good. feel yeah. in alignment and I feel balanced. So... Thank anyway, you. less about me and more <laughs> about you. This is Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And we have Cheryl yeah. Gentry, Gentry from, and I love that name. It's just, how did you get that name? Cheryl Gentry? Yeah, Gentry. <laughs> That's just like the Gentry. My, you know, the my, upmarket, the up. Well, my, uh, my dad and I recently did the um, 23 and Me. Uh-huh and found out and went back to the gentry brothers that sailed from london uh back in the 1800s uh -huh. and landed on the chesapeake so i'm from dc uh, -huh. uh in the maryland area so Gen that's the english. family name it's, i knew yes. it, was, it had some english yes. stuff to do with it. <laughs> yeah so so cheryl gentry's on the phone on the on the call tonight and she is from glow media so i just want to welcome you to the show Thank you. And we're Glow Global Events Glow, now. Yes, Glow Global, yes. Glow Media is still our corporate uh, founding name. Mm -hmm. uh, but about two years ago, as we were approaching our 20th year in business, we did a rebrand, kind of updated and refreshed it. We're still right. glowing, but it's Glow Global what Events because of like, our what? orange is okay. my and complete energy color. So yeah. doing events, we had to have something that was energetic. And as soon as you saw the brand and the look and the logo, right. um, Orange has been my favorite color. Great. And so you are Glow Global and your handle basking in the glow of love. Yes. Well, not of love, well, but we, we well, sprinkle I, love in our like, events, but it's, it's, like yes. it's basking in the glow, right? We're basking in the glow. But it's like, for me, it's, it's for me, like I think of love. Yeah. You yeah. know, and, and, and so it's kind of like, 
love because you love what you do. Absolutely. That's one of the things that like when I met you, it was clear to me that you absolutely love what you do. I love 20 years later. I love what I do. So I want to go like just a little bit. So you're from the DC area. Are you, do you have brothers and sisters? I have an older brother who mm -hmm. lives in LA. Mm -hmm. He's a production designer. So okay. he's in the arts and Hollywood. He has a, a new series on Hulu, uh, which is a horror genre, but I love watching. He and I used to watch a lot of horror movies together. Uh -huh. And so he's production designing this amazing, uh, this amazing show now. Mm -hmm. And my sister is a celebrity hairstylist. She's actually in New Orleans okay. uh, filming a new movie, a new Netflix movie. Nice. And so my mom raised three entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and we're all very artistic in what we do. Good. Was your mother artistic? My mom's an opera singer. Oh, nice. Yes, yes. And so we grew up, we grew up in music. We were in the DC Youth Orchestra. I played the flute. My brother played the clarinet. My sister played the violin. So we were always very musical. Mm -hmm. My sister and I danced in the Washington School of Ballet mm -hmm. and, uh, and also the Capitol Ballet, which is an African-American owned ballet company in, in DC. Mm -hmm. And that was just our life. Wow. That's very artsy. So we all picked very artsy careers, but right. we're entrepreneurs at the same time. So let me ask you, how did you get into your industry? I know I've heard this story before, but I just want to know, how did you get into your industry? And did you know you wanted to be an event planner when you came out of school? Well, I've always been completely passionate about planning events. My mom would have a big Christmas party. And I was always there making sure the table was set, what was going to be on the menu. Right. So I was always very girly, liking to plan parties. Uh -huh. um, I went to school at Howard University and majored in human development. Uh -huh. And so when I got out, I got a job at Marriott um, in, their, in their corporate headquarters. Uh -huh. And back then, there wasn't a title called event planning. Right. The HR departments did the company picnic right. and the Christmas party. And that's what I found myself doing and staying in the office until midnight. Right. Even though I did HR and benefits management, that was just kind of a byproduct of the energy and the excitement that I felt when it was time for the Christmas party or the company picnic. Right. So you were the person. I was the person. To and go so to. how many years did you do that for? Oh, I was at Marriott um, for about three or four years. Mm -hmm. Then I went on to Colonial Parking, which is a huge, big parking establishment in mm -hmm. D.C., um, planned all of their events. But again, I was in HR. Right. Um, I left D.C. and came to New York. I worked at Arista Records. And I was in artist development, mm -hmm. and but still, it was the album release parties and all the events that I just fell drawn to. It was right. like a magnet. Right. And then I left Arista and went over to Gerbo and Boss. Right. And it was the fashion was shows. Jeans? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And it was the fashion shows um, and the seventh and sixth shows that I just felt like this is what I needed to do. Right. You know, back that was what I've been in business twenty years, about twenty two years ago. Even the gifting suites wasn't a big idea. And sometimes yeah. I like to say, if you really look back in history, I probably kind of invented yeah. the, the right. gifting suite. I would pack up all of our clothes. I would go to L.A. I would either go to the Soul Train Awards or the Grammys or whatever awards that was going on mm -hmm. and just gave away product. Right. And that was pre, we're going to blur out what logo someone's right. wearing. Right. Um, and so it was a really good time. And we just kind of put ourselves on the map. We did a producer series right. where we really identified the producers in the music industry and we did a commercial with them. Mm -hmm. um, our goal with that was to go into five cities right. and we selected high school students right. because I really wanted to teach students that you don't have to be in front of the camera. You don't have to be the artist. But there's so many talented people behind the scenes. Right. Um, and I it's wanted to highlight, exactly, I wanted to highlight the producers. We did another series with a few publicists. And we went to the high schools and really presented that program. So hopefully that had an indelible uh, memory for right. people to say, I don't have to be the rapper. I don't have to be the singer. I don't have to be designer. There's a whole group of people working behind the scenes right. that's really impacting what they see. Right. So now when did you take that leap? Oh, uh, that was 20 years ago. My mentors. Well, how did you take that leap? Um, you know what? I was, I had only been in New York for two years. Mm -hmm. and when did you come to New York? Um, I just had to get out of DC, okay. <laughs> uh, broke off a relationship and, uh, it was just time to, right. to leave. And my sister lived here. My best friend was here in New York and, um, 
I had been here two years, a year at Arista, a year and a half at Jerbo, mm -hmm. um, met two great women who owned an advertising agency. Mm -hmm. And after working with them, they kind of showed me the ropes. They were the advertising agency that represented your bow and boss. Right. And they showed me the ropes, everything budget, everything marketing. Um, I had always been, you know, promotions, publicity within the music business right. and the fashion business. And they showed me another aspect of really how to merge the marketing piece with that, looking at budgets. And I was learning so much from them. But they saw my passion with doing the events, the right. fashion shows, uh, the seventh on six shows for Jerbo and Boss, right. some of the ideas that we were coming up with to really push those those brands into the mainstream, into the market. And they said, one day, why don't you start your own business? We kind of spent the weekend thinking about names, thinking about what the organization was going to do, mm -hmm. how did, you know, it wasn't Glow at the time. But what was I going to represent? What was right. going to be my business? And um, came up with our mission, came up with our goals, uh, who our target audience would be. Right. And then was the fun mm -hmm. part. All in the weekend. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, came up with the fun part and found the name Glow. Mm -hmm. And um, it was Glow Media and Marketing mm -hmm. because it was really going to just, just be more than events. Right. And really how to merge that whole marketing aspect, but also engagement right. um, that when you break it down to events, but then add some levels of PR as well. And uh, I went to my boss. You. You're just like, I just, you're just remembering <laughs> this. I am. And I it, know. It's like, just like you're just remembering <laughs> it. And it's, I, I, can, I can feel it. Like I can feel <laughs> The excitement, you know, you're 20 years younger, you're just a little chipper. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was really, I went to my boss and I made business cards mm -hmm. at like really quick express plays. And I said, here's my business card. I'm starting my own business. Right. But I'd love to keep you all as a client and work with you. And I stayed on uh, as a what consultant. Did he, what did he say? He, first of all, he said, where did you get your business cards? How did right. you do this so quick? Right. Um, I don't play. Exactly. Um, but I was ready to step out and they believed in me. It was an organization that didn't feel threatened by me leaving mm -hmm. and they wanted to support my endeavor. Mm -hmm. um, I took my assistant mm -hmm. uh, who was Glow's employee. Wow. Uh, and she was at, at uh, Jerbo and Boss with me. And we started in my kitchen. Uh, we had amazing big clients. I think Vibe was one of our first clients. Uh -huh. They were doing a Vibe style show at the Javits Center, okay, which is gonna, a convention we're gonna, center. We're going to hold that. We're going <laughs> to okay. snip that right there. <laughs> and we're going to be right back. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you stuck in a rut? Negative thoughts, feelings, and conversations got you down? Hi, I'm Noreen Sumter, The Potentiator. Tune in every Tuesday at 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time and listen for new ideas on my show, Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, on talkradio.nyc. Who do you want to connect with? Are you an entrepreneur or intrapreneur looking to build your following? Welcome to our show. Follow, Follow Me Friday, Friday with Joan and Priya. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern on talkradio.nyc. We're, We're your digital, digital connectors. connectors. Woo woo! What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. So this is Noreen and we're back on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And I'm with Cheryl Gentry from Glow Global Events. Events. <laughs> Glow Global Events. So go back, tell me. So your 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 assistant went with you. Yes. That's a big deal. Yes. 
I, I asked her, I said, do you want to come with a new young company with amazing clients? We had three big clients. Um, or you could stay here. I told her honestly that they couldn't jump her salary to what I was making. Uh, because within compensation, you can't jump an employee so much. Right. So I said, you're going to be doing my job and you're not going to get paid for it, <laughs> basically. And um, I gave her a week to think about it. And mm -hmm. she came back and she said, I'm going to join Glow. Wow. And we're still friends to this day. She's just a sweetheart. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of employees and a lot of people that worked with me over the years that I've served as a mentor, that I've nurtured, that I've helped out with their career. Right. And uh, she's just a sweetheart. Oh my God. My she, first employee. I, I, like, I'm getting chills from that <laughs> because it's just like, she, it, it's almost like she was meant to be, you know yes. what I mean? It was like that. It was like an intuitive, like a support, like a, wow, that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. And she would come to my kitchen and we'd work out of my kitchen and we had three big events we were working on. Wow. <laughs> that's great. More stories, more stories. So, so you've left the company, you have your mentors. One of the things I remember you saying when we met was, um, you don't choose your mentors. Your mentors choose you. Yeah. Say a little bit more about that because most people think that they choose a mentor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know what? A woman, an executive uh, that I worked with, um, I thought that she would be a mentor. Mm -hmm. And um, an African-American woman, senior executive uh, at a corporation that I was working at in D.C., and I just knew she was going to be my mentor. Mm -hmm. You know, I just thought we're both, you know, African-Americans working in this company. Who else do you turn to for right. help and support? Right. And she agreed to have a meeting with me. And in that meeting, she said, you don't pick your mentors. Your mentors pick you. Right. And that was a direct response to I don't want to be your mentor. And she wasn't that person that I could help. Uh, that I could uh, depend on right. to help me uh, through my life cycle in the organization, right. which really disappointed me. But it also taught me something else, very crucial and very important, that if someone younger comes for assistance, mm -hmm. um, instead of giving them that response, give them ways that you can help. Because mm -hmm. when you're a senior executive or when you have wis wisdom and knowledge to share, you can always help someone. Right. You can always help, even if it's sometimes I meet people at conferences or events that I'm speaking at, even if I, I let them know that there's some tools for them to research, mm -hmm. whatever those tools mm -hmm. will be, listening to their stories. It might just be that one time, mm -hmm. um, but always offering something to help someone instead of just walking away. Right. And so that's why I mentor a lot because yes, you do. I have I had those mentors. I currently have mentors that I can pick up the phone and ask questions. Sometimes it's not as formal as every month. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, sometimes it's quarterly, but sometimes one of my mentors serves as a sponsor. If there is ever anyone looking for an event planner, right. he puts my name in the pot. Right. From the largest organizations to the smallest organizations, he's always thinking of me first right. in mind. So. That's awesome. That means you have integrity and he respects what you do. Yes. That's awesome. So uh, I, I'm a firm believer that um, one has to offer help, right? Absolutely. It's not even help, it's support, it's guidance, it's helping them to build their confidence. Yep. Because uh, like starting a business, you don't know where it's going to go. I mean, like how did you build your confidence? How did you know for yourself? Well, I've always been confident. Right. So my mom instilled that in, in us. Uh, my first business, I was in high school. Mm -hmm. My sister and I uh, would sell songs, lyrics mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. songs. I know this story, but you know. Yeah, we would, we would write uh, all the lyrics down right. and sell them for $5 a song to all of our friends in high school. Right. And so we saw a need. We fulfilled it, right. and then we made money doing it. Right. And so I think we were always all entrepreneurial. And, you know, my mom um, instilled that in us. Uh -huh. So I was always confident. Uh -huh. But being new to New York, I didn't know that I could start a business and be successful. I knew that I would be here 20 years later, mm -hmm. and now we're looking at succession to get to the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, but I've learned a lot along the way. One thing I did learn is I started off as an event planner. Right. Um, now I'm a CEO and right. have moved um, out of the planning day to day, mm -hmm. although I'm still energized by 
whatever my team is working right. on. Um, I'm still in touch. I love client relations. So I need, I make sure that I'm involved with the event mm -hmm. and know what's going on. It, is it the nitty gritty of what's going on? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. But we have me weekly meetings with my team who then have weekly meetings with the clients. I try to jump on those weekly meetings as mm -hmm. often as I can mm -hmm. um, because people do hire who they know right. and who they like. Right. And so by, um, giving my expertise on calls, ways that we can make processes easier. You know, my job is to really enforce the processes, but create the processes that everything is smooth, not mm -hmm. only for our client onboarding, but our staff and our team as well. Right. right. So I know that you're creating some fabulous um, event planning ideas, technologies and stuff like that. How's that going? Well, I, you know what I was thinking, um, Last week, uh, it's been about a year and a half now mm -hmm. that we ran a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, we raised thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I decided to do Kickstarter because it's all or nothing. Right. If you raise the money, you get it. If right. you don't, you don't get anything. Right. Uh, we ended up raising uh, thirty thousand to build to get to beta. Right. Um, and one of the things that was a little bit disappointing disappointing was by the time I would walk into VCs. Mm -hmm. And I had a killer deck and mm -hmm. just talking about event planning mm -hmm. and the technologies and the time, how time consuming it is and had used so many platforms on the market mm -hmm. and understood the pains and weaknesses mm -hmm. that event planners were facing with mm -hmm. the technology by having to use so many platforms and part of that platform would be manual. Um, and so I, I came up with a killer platform called Onsite Planner. Okay. Um, I was thinking about two weeks ago when people talk about whether they fail or not, have I failed with this? Because it's not to market yet. We're still right. in beta. We've gotten some great feedback uh, from event planners mm -hmm. who are all waiting for it to come onto the market. Mm -hmm. It's just that we haven't been funded. And right. a lot of that has been because the VCs are saying no. And how are you going to run two companies? And where does this fit? Um, and you know what? No one asks Jack Dorsey, how is he going to run Twitter and mm -hmm. PayPal, you know? And so I'll get there. Now we need to tweak and look at the software and the platform that we had only because there are more platforms on the market. Right. And so I want to make sure that as a practitioner and as an event planner, that we're still trying to find a pathway right. to make it easier, but better for you as a planner and better for you as your, uh, for your clients. Right. And so you mentioned, um, have you failed? Well, only because it's not to market yet. And so, you know, in the tech world, they say what fail fast or. And fail often. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we're still trying to get it done. It's going to get done. Yeah. But, but right now it just, it hasn't been completed and I thought it would have by mm -hmm. now. Um, that's your thought. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what's what's that other statement they say? It's like, it's on. It's never something about being God is on time or he's never he's Absolutely. right on time. It's yeah. that kind of a conversation. Yeah. I can't, don't ask me that question. And I'm learning so much more along the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, even that process taught me a lot about glows processes right. um, that I implemented within the service based business. Right. And so it's just making glow a better business. It's going to make on site planner better when mm -hmm. we get to market. So here I say that get to market. That's right. You are going to go to market. Um, and so it's it's an evolution. It's a it's a growth. I'm learning something different, and uh, I'm enjoying it. Right, and, and and it's a process to learn. And there might be one little piece that's missing. But I'm I've heard in the events that I do is that white women get uh, get the money, but they don't get a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Right, black women get nothing. Asian women are just really quiet. And most Asian women, Latino women, and black women, and white women too, but mostly those three women, they bootstrap everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. They literally bootstrap because um, most of these VCs um, don't want to give to women because right. they don't have the faith yeah. in women. And they definitely are not giving to black and Latina. We are the lowest, lowest, lowest or at, on the totem pole, and we are the last to receive anything. Yeah. And most of us bootstrap it, which, you know, I'm like, when we do bootstrap it and we make it happen, it's such a proud feeling. Right, exactly. And, so and, I, there and everybody lot, comes running. Then. Exactly. And there are a lot of uh, women, um, you know, that's gotten into the space, that's raising money. Uh, there's a woman um, 
Arlon, and I don't remember her last name. Uh, she was just on the cover of Fast Company. Mm -hmm. um, she started a fund and is funding companies that look like her. Right. And so it's within this last year, it's been a lot of movement with other um, uh, VCs and other funds that are supporting women mm -hmm. uh, in the diversity of tech. Right. And I saw um, on LinkedIn today uh, 21, uh, 21 black leaders in various companies, some which were companies that they work for, like Facebook and uh, various other technology companies. And there were some VC women who were creating their own venture capitalist type mm -hmm. organization. So it's just, it's just a matter. It's like meeting It's that, time. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. just meeting that one piece, that one little bit yeah. of the Lego yeah. that will burst it right open. So I would just say, you know, oh, I'm reading the um, book, Seed of the Soul. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you are, it gives an example that if you are looking to get married, but you're walking around really upset that you're not married, then that's what you're going to generate. That's what right. your consciousness is going to give out. But if you are walking around going, oh, I'm going to get married, uh, you know, and you're excited about the possibility of creating this marriage, then you're going to get married, yep, right? Absolutely. So it's like you're excited about the possibility of your company being funded and being successful. It's going to happen. It can't not happen. Yeah. I always try to say, I always say not try that it's already happened, you're just walking into it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so, yeah. yeah, that's really awesome. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Yeah. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Do you love or are you intrigued about New York City and its neighborhoods? I'm Jeff Goodman, host of Rediscovering New York, a weekly show that showcases New York's history and its extraordinary neighborhoods. Every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., we focus on a particular neighborhood and explore its history, its vibe, its feel, and its energy. Tune in live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. Do you like comic books and movies? How about TV and pop culture? Then you've come to the right place. Hi, I'm Michael Dolce, host of Secrets of the Sire. Joined every week by my co-host, Hassan, Lord of the Radio Godwin. Together, we have over 15 years experience creating graphic novels, screenplays, and more. Join us as we bring you the inside scoop on the pop culture universe you love to talk about. Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, talkradio.nyc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. So we're back. This is Noreen Sumter from Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, and I'm with Cheryl Gentry from Glow. <laughs> you love saying that. I do. And that's where I, that's where I get stuck. Glow Global Events. <laughs> that's a tongue twister. <laughs> no, let me tell you. Every, it's almost every client, every person that comes on here, it's like, there's, if it's the name, the company, it's something. I always screw up. But I always say, if I don't screw up, we're not having a good show. <laughs> So I wrote a bunch of questions, but like, okay. um, so, so when you're doing, when you're doing your business or when you were in the day to day of it, or even now, do you like rely on, in, do you feel your intuition talking to you? Do you, do you go into any of that all or is time. it all like, you know, brain? You know what? I'm very strategic and I'm very stepwise. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think part of that is because of my horoscope. So I'm, right. I'm what, cancer, what cancer, a cancer. Okay. And so my husband was a cancer. it's very stepwise. I'm right. very methodical um, on my approach to mm -hmm. a lot, but I'm also very in tune to my intuition. Mm -hmm. um, I like to be proactive and not reactive. Mm -hmm. uh, something happened recently and um, 
someone in my office, I said something and then the exact thing happened that mm -hmm. I said it was going to happen. And the girl in my office said, how did you know that? And I was like, I could feel it. I, I could feel I, it. I, just, I was just about I to say feel, you could feel it. I could feel it. Yeah. You can feel someone's energy, um, whether we're meeting with clients, whether I'm interviewing people, I can immediately feel an energy. Right. And um, we, and I'll tell you the situation, we recently hired someone and two days later they quit. But after she accepted, mm -hmm. I said, I don't think she's the right person. Right. But we had made the offer and I didn't want to rescind. Right. But two days later she left so <laughs> when you started in so have you always been an intuitive like working with your intuition or is this something that you developed when you went out on your own i think i always had it mm -hmm. i've always relied on that um i've never wanted to hide it or bury it mm -hmm. um sometimes my intuition will cause me to be still mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, because I don't want to lead, of course, my business based on just all intuition. Mm -hmm. But it allows me to stop and pause mm -hmm. and not make a decision Right. sometimes. Just maybe think about it. Why am I feeling this? But then look at the pros and cons right. and then go with, you know, uh, something a little bit more practical. But I, my intuition is my stillness moment. Like, right. why are you getting this feeling? What does this mean? Right. And then you have to look at it based on business. How right. is this going to impact my business? There's so many different things that happen right. of how your business is impacted without just jumping the gun. But I still rely on my intuition, but right. it allows me to be still. So it's like a flow. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so, so do you, do, do you think, so it's a combination of both. I agree that is a combination of both, but I think that, being a creative mm -hmm. also a lot of that that you create is downloaded and probably is it like is there a, like a flow when you're talking to a client you can kind of see well the interesting thing about events and being creative mm -hmm. is you still have to be persuasive oh absolutely and so a part of my creativity is still convincing them to do it my way mm -hmm. because i've thought through how it's going to impact me steps down the road. Right. So I need to be really persuasive. If me and my team thought through, this is what we want to present to the client. We actually want them to take our recommendation right. and not come up with another recommendation. Right. Right. So the creativity has to be well thought out mm -hmm. and we have to think every step because they're going to say, well, what happens if this happens or what happens if this happens or how does this flow or talk to me about how you see envisioning this right. happening. So we have to do our, our, our uh, creative brief and our boards, but it also has to flow through the event and through right. the end. Right. And I think that's what, I, th I think that's how event planning or that's how we're different than an artist right. you know an artist will feel and draw um i'm not an artist so maybe they have the end the but you're other doing side a different of kind that of art drawing. yeah yeah and so we're all we always you're actually the manifesting other side. you're actually for me what it looks like is you're pulling out manifesting creating and you're actually bringing it to yes yeah yeah because a conference isn't creative. I mean, it's fun. We get to meet a lot of people, but you know, doing a conference for seven hundred to a thousand people, it's like, like, that's that's not fun. That's not that creative. Uh, but we can add some creative elements. Absolutely. In um, we've been creative with scent marketing now. So when uh, you walk in. Uh, it's not visible, so it's not smelling like perfume, but mm -hmm. we're using essential oils and uh, to flow through the room to give people any emo different emotions and mm -hmm. feelings. Uh, we're being creative with food and looking at um, how we're snacking and not just a lot of junk, mm -hmm. but creating things that have probiotics in it mm -hmm. or um, things that'll keep you up or, you know, just really looking at your diet and really being purposeful. I was on. laughing because I was at conference this year food was so bad i thought i was gonna <laughs> die literally i jumped in a cab oh, wow. and i went to trader joe's oh wow and i like stocked up on food yeah i literally i actually bought my own food at <laughs> the conference people were like what are you doing i said i had to eat vegetables yeah. i had to eat vegetables because yeah. it's it. bad and lately it's been bad because it's really bad if it's junk like no one wants potato chips at a conference anymore you know, so it wasn't really, that bad, but like it was just, <laughs> you know, stuff sits a yeah, long time yep, until absolutely. it gets served and it gets hard and it loses its flavor and texture. And yeah, yeah, like that. Absolutely. So we talk to the chefs. We ask that um, 
if they can use products that are locally grown. Mm -hmm. Like we're really sustainable. We're really looking out for our clients. Um, but we want to make sure that we're being bringing the best to the attendees right. and that we're being cost effective. But sitting and talking to a chef about, you know, buying locally uh, isn't more expensive. Right. It just helps with the economy and uh, the neighborhood and the community. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now what what are the skills like the, the basic because, you know, there are a lot of people out there that say they're event runners. <laughs> there are a gazillion people out there. Yeah. And you still go, but I'm not an event planner. I did, <laughs> I did a power networking last week, which, you know, there were 77 people and like, I'm like this, there's 77 people. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And then we're going to register and we're going to get them in, right? We're going to feed them. And that's the last thing I think about is food. <laughs> and we're going to have them have a really good session. However, it's really challenging. Yeah. It's, and especially if you're working with, um, another vendor or and then they have five people that they're working with and they it's a lot of work yeah. you know and then we were trying to do it for as little as little dollars, <laughs> a little dollars as possible yeah <laughs> right so I can't imagine working on a humongous 750 people and a gazillion helpers and start uh, I can't imagine so what skills are one of the most critical not just a strategic, but like what is the most critical skill that a person has to have? Well, event planning is one of the top 10 most stressful jobs, okay. according to Forbes magazine. Um, but you have to be detail oriented. Okay. You have to love the nitty gritty of the details. You have to have processes in place on how to track those details. Right. Because a big part of, yeah, I'm writing the details. Yeah, I'm listening to what the speaker wants. But then how are you recording it? And then how are you sharing that information with right. others? And so you can imagine over the 20 years I've been in business, now they're shared drives. Right. So things are very easy to share with the client. But when I started, it literally was everything on Excel and sending emails and waiting right. for the email and waiting the response. Right. Now we have shared drives. We use a lot of surveys. We do when we first sign a client, we send them a client survey to answer all the questions that we're going to need. Right. We set up a project management portal right. so they can go on. We upload the information so they can see what we're doing real time all the time. We're sharing reports all the time so they can know how many people are signing up, how right. many people are registering right. for the conference. So it really is the most important thing is finding the best way to track all that. I'm laughing because I'm like, <laughs> I get excited when I got 40 people coming to an event. I get excited. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can't imagine 70, 700s or in the hundreds or in the thousands. Yes, yes. And then moving some of those people. We've done events where we've had a thousand people in Hong Kong and 500 of those were coming in from other countries oh, and tracking itineraries and start dates and departures. How and many people in your organization, when you guys go out on the road, how many people come out with you? So we have a core team that usually comes out, which is about eight, between eight and 10. Um, and then we bring on day of staff okay. to help out with registration. But those eight to 10 people are really the leads with food and beverage management. So working with the kitchen and the wait staff to mm -hmm. make sure that the venue has the wait staff out working with the venue to make sure the tables are set like we want in, mm -hmm. the decorator has everything. So then that breaks down into the timeline, which we call our event day TikTok. Right. Who arrives at what time? What time is the photographer and videographer getting there to set up? What time is the talent going to arrive to do sound check, to walk on the stage, to see how it feels? So all of those things, we have right. our production lead, we have our show caller, uh, we have I'm our stage I'm manager. <laughs> so we bring in, as we move closer to the event, we have quite a few people, attendee management who you know works through the attendees, uh, everyone checking in. Uh, making sure their process is smooth when they right. check in and getting to their table. I used or... to be a secretary back in the day. <laughs> and um, so <laughs> <laughs> just checking that your boss has his itinerary. <laughs> it's like that in itself. I can't imagine doing that for like hundreds of people. Yeah. yeah. And then but... I've got to get them in the cars and I've got to get them in the hotel right. and I've got them. Wow. Yeah. You have to be detailed. Yeah. And you have to enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. So what's one of the, if you can, what's one of the most fantastic, I mean, I'm not sure they all are, but what's the most memorable event 
that you have done so far in your 20 years and what's the vision of what you would like to do? What would be like the epitome of an event that you would like to do? Uh, the, the, the best event I think we did, which was... Um, Don't say Kilimanjaro. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. <laughs> Um, although I, I love all the events that we do abroad. We right. did an event in uh, Rwanda in mm -hmm. Kigali mm -hmm. and um, just meeting the people. We always go on site and get to meet the people in whatever country we're going right. to. We like to adapt some type of cultural activity mm -hmm. within the event. And so we had drummers uh, to open up the program. It was just absolutely beautiful. Right. And Kigali was a beautiful backdrop uh, to have that event. Um, We've done events in Mauritius and Hong Kong, but the best event I think we did, which was um, one of, yeah, it was one of the one of the best, and it was for Shishado. Oh, and, and makeup people. Yep, and we built a labyrinth. Mm -hmm. So as you walked in, you the guests registered, and you would walk in, but you would have to go through a maze. And we actually hired a labyrinth designer mm -hmm. because we didn't want it to just be Some zigzag kind of, yeah. and you go through. We really wanted you to have Mixed. ends and exits right. and it was an experience. But as you were walking through that, there were atomizers that would every seven minutes spray so you could smell as you walk through. Mm -hmm. And then um, after you did that, we hired a voiceover artist mm -hmm. to really talk about listening the notes and as you would walk through and mm -hmm. he was saying, you know, lavender. And so it was this experience going through this maze mm -hmm. and it was all about touch points on that. And so I absolutely, that's one of my favorite events. Cool. Yeah. And I also, um, should we save this? I'm going to save that for when we come back, <laughs> we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Thank you. You're listening to the talking alternative network. <laughs> The best designs for your life start at home. I'm David Thiergartner, interior designer and host of At Home. Listen live Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time as we talk to the very best professionals about interior design and the design that's all around us right here on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. So we're back. This is Noreen Sumter from Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And I'm with Cheryl Gentry, and I'm going to laugh, <laughs> from Glow Global Media. No, events. <laughs> <laughs> events, events, events. Glow Global Events. Yes. See what I'm telling you? So, so, you know, Oprah, I'll be thrown off the show, I guess. <laughs> but whatever, this is my show. <laughs> So tell us about your trip to Kilimanjaro because you are one of the 27 percentile percentage, right? Yes. 20 percent, 27 percent of people make it in five days. Five days. Yeah. And because a lot of, of people have summoned it, but it's just that I'm in the 27 percent of right. people to summon in five days. Right. In five days. It so that was, means you were kicking butt. I was crying every day. <laughs> you were crying every day. <laughs> it was the hardest thing I've ever done and not physically. Um, because I started training, and that's why I walk so much. But uh -huh. I started training and walking around Manhattan in my boots. Uh -huh. And um, were they heavy? The boots? They weren't. They weren't that heavy. Um, 
they're probably about four pounds though. So it's Each? yeah, uh, yeah. So it's heavier than what well, I these bloody Doc Martins. Yeah, like they're like three. Yeah, they they were pretty heavy, but they yeah, they're heavier than my everyday boots, but they weren't you know uncomfortably heavy. Right. Um, but we were doing the event in Kigali, mm -hmm. and I've always wanted to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. It was almost you talk about that intuition earlier. It was almost innate that I knew that. Tanzania was that close. Your family sold around the world or right. somewhere. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so I got to um, Kigali and we were meeting with the tour operator for some of the cultural activities. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, wait, how close is Kilimanjaro? And she says, it's like an hour of flight. And I was like, do you do trips to Kili? And she was like, absolutely. Kili, you got she, very familiar. Yes, I did get very familiar after I summoned it. <laughs> Not Kilimanjaro, <laughs> Kili. <laughs> yes. Um, and so she sent me the itinerary. Uh -huh. She sent me the days that would have been after the conference we were doing. And I started asking a bunch of friends. And everyone said yes initially. Um, and then they punked out. But then, yeah, little by little, everyone was dropping off for whatever reason. <laughs> it's oh, my so funny. Corn hurts. <laughs> I know. It's so funny. My sister said, this is your bucket list, not mine. Right. <laughs> so she ended up not going, right. although she was in Kigali with me. Um, but I got the itinerary. I started shopping. I started asking friends. Another friend of mine had uh, tried to climb but didn't make it. So I was getting her advice. Uh, you know, went to the doctors, got my shots. Uh, but I really started looking at homeopathic uh, options to help me get up there. So I right. started taking chlorophyll shots. Mm -hmm. um, I bought you mean shots and, like that or injections? Uh, yeah, not shots. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah drink shots. Um, I started. Um, buying ginger gum because that was supposed to help with uh, nausea and, uh -huh. and altitude oh, sickness. Altitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I read everything I could. I just felt like since I was a girl and I, I have my grandmother's National Geographic collection. Right. And I started looking through all the magazines and the books to see if I just dog eared something about Kilimanjaro. Right. Because it was like, it was just you this. Felt it. I did. I was like, I have to do this. And I ended up doing it by myself. I hired a porter, mm -hmm. a cook, mm -hmm. um, a guide. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got there, I was telling the story the other day. I got there and my bag was too heavy. Right. And so my the the guide said we're going to have to bring another porter to carry the other stuff and the stove what do you have and in the there? oven. And oh, they Jesus made me. Jesus Christ! What did you just say? A stove and well, a that's oven? what the cook had. The, uh -huh. So we needed a, another porter to carry that stuff. But I opened my bag. And the guide sitting there with me, and he's like, "Why do you have five pair of shoes?" <laughs> what for he was like, "Why do you have like three pair of sneakers and another pair of boots?" And I was like, "I need to take pictures. I want to look different every day." <laughs> he's like, "No, we're gonna leave those." Right. Um, and so I took those out. I think I had like five pair of sunglasses. Um, I had the hand warmers. And I had a huge big pack that I think I bought from like, you know, Costco's or Walmart. Right, right. And he's like, why do you have so many hand warmers? I said, well, I bought these for you guys. He's like, sure, we do this all the time. We don't need hand warmers. <laughs> and so I offloaded a lot of stuff. And um, it's so cute. And I decided I, I wanted to leave my makeup bag. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm taking my makeup bag. But when I got to the first hut, I felt extremely you know you think about vanity and mm -hmm. you think about you know you, you people are always in the mirror and you know you're on social media and so people are always concerned about how they look right and I got to <clears> that <throat> first hut there wasn't a mirror and the toilet was a hole in the ground <clears throat> and I come to Killy exactly and I said why did I even bring this makeup bag like just <laughs> the goal smeared. of the vanity right smeared. exactly <laughs> and then I look back on the pictures and I, I still look beautiful right. but I think we all think so so much that we need it right but we started out and I cried every day you know because when you think someone's ahead of you we always think linear right but people would pass me or I would pass someone and you would look straight and then you would look up and you would look up and imagine looking up four flights right. and someone's ahead of you right. four flights up. And so that's what would scare me and just would have me crying. And then you meet up um, at the hut in the camps with other people that are either descending right. or trying to climb with you. 
and just the emotions. It's great to talk to people, but just the emotions. You could feel it if someone didn't summon and was coming down. Right. They were in tears. Right. They're crying. So then you're thinking, can I make it? Right. Or then you would see the people that are coming down like, yes, congratulations. You're going to do it. it out. Right. Exactly. And, and so, then you're, 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 they're running on adrenaline. They could do it again. Exactly. And so some days, you know, my guide would tie me. Some days I was really slow. Um, when, one trek between camps, I was going so slow that the, uh, one of the porters got to the next camp, dropped off everything, walked back and got my day bag, walked back to the camp. And, I and still, how, how far was that? Oh, it was, I don't even know how many miles or kilometers it was, but it was, it took me hours to get back after he had done it twice and to carry my day pack. What do they look like? Are they strong? I mean, are they lean? Are they, you know? They're tall. Uh, wiry. Lean. Yep. Mm -hmm. And strong. And strong. Exactly. And they got, probably got they're walking. They've got great big lung capacity. Yeah. And they're, they're doing this. As soon as I uh, got back down to base camp, the next day, two days later, my right. guide was going out with another group. I mean, so these guys are used to doing it. You have to have a guide to climb. Uh, the guides have to be uh, Tanzanian. And so just learning about their culture right. and talking to them on the way up the mountain, right. um, it was just an experience that I will never, ever, ever And so forget. what did they say to you when you were crying? He was like, no blah, blah, blah on the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, let's go. No blah, 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 blah. And um, So what did you find out about yourself while doing that trip? Um, I felt, I found out that I was definitely mentally stronger than I thought mm -hmm. because every day was your mind playing with you, whether right. you could do it. Like I said, it wasn't physical at all, but it was, did I have the capacity to push myself right. one more time? Um, looking, like I said, emotionally looking at people <clears throat> that didn't make it and coming down. Um, it was my quiet time. I journaled a lot. Um, I was asking myself a lot of questions about people that were in my life at mm -hmm, the time, mm -hmm. you know, but it was an interesting time when I went because I felt that there was a lot of junk around me mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason. I couldn't identify it. And um, I started writing about those experiences. I started uh, asking myself questions of whether I wanted to deal with certain so personalities. Exactly. I was exactly, exactly. And it was like the mountain was talking to me. I right. started calling her she, um, because when I would look up, there that's when I knew I would have to fight. So I even found myself looking down. So there was a humbleness that came over right. me. Reverence. That, exactly. Exactly. And so um, it was, it was just an amazing time. Just, you know, starting off with seeing the animals, um, but then getting to the top, and it was just so what cold that there like were no animals. To the top? It was very cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you said it was really <laughs> uh, cold. It was freezing, but seeing the glaciers, and like I said, my guide would explain to me how the glaciers have receded. So yes. understanding nature, understanding global warming and what's happening. Yes. Um, but there was one little walk away that when we got to the top and there are two reader boards. So at every hut, they have a reader board, a reader board. Yes. That tells you at what altitude, how high you are. Mm -hmm. And it has a name of each, uh, of each reader board. And so there are two on the top of the mountain because mm -hmm. one is higher than the other. Mm -hmm. And I got there and I just sat down. And like I told you, I, had written a note mm -hmm. that said I did it. Mm -hmm. And I had written the note in October, which was a month before I climbed. Mm -hmm. And I said, I did it. And I had the date. And I just, I was looking for that sign because I wanted to pull that sign out. Right. So out of being cold and trying to find this sign in my, in my backpack. Um, so <laughs> I find, didn't have the exactly. of shoes. And my guide took my GoPro and started doing video of me. And I took the sign out and we took a picture mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we were out of there. It was time to get back down get because there were people that had left the base camp so with me. How long did it take to, to get down? Um, so there are different camps. So base camp took probably about another four hours. But I got to one area, which they call um, Jamaica's Rock. Jamaica? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there were some Jamaican guys that climbed and then they end up jumping because they were high and so they jumped off the mountain and it really is that steep that you can jump off the mountain and they died <laughs> and they died 
And so I was at my poor um, <laughs> and so I was at Jamaica's Rock, and my guide said, "If you don't make it to the top of the mountain in the next thirty minutes, I'm going to have to send you back." Mm. Well, all the books that I read, I thought that they wanted you on the top of the mountain so you can see the sunrise. Right. But in all actuality, if you don't get to the top within a certain amount of time, it's going to be too cold because it's going to take three hours to get back down and descend. Right. And so we that, left at midnight. The sun's coming up. Oh, okay. And so we left at midnight and we had to zigzag all the way up because the top of the mountain is volcanic ash. Right. And you could slip and slide back. So over midnight is when the ground is hardest. Oh. So okay. we had been we had been walking for six hours. We left at midnight. It was six AM. The sun was coming up. He knew it was going to take another three hours for me to get back down. Right. And so with those temperatures and that cold, you can't be nine hours in the fidget cold. Right, right, right. But I made it. Wow. So uh, if you know what that says to me, <clears throat> yeah, what that says to me is that your tech situation, you're going to make it. Yes. You got it. Yes. So we are at the end of the show. And thank I just want to thank you so much thank for coming you so on. Thank so much. It was really great. It was so pleasant. It's like talking to a girlfriend. That's right. That's how the show is. It's not supposed to be like, you know. So I just want to say thank you very much. And um, Thank you all for joining and for the people that are going to be listening to this later on. Yes. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I knew I loved you the moment I met you. <laughs> thank so thank you. you so much. And this is Noreen Sumter signing off on Beyond Potential. Live life your way. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you for joining. Everybody yeah, thank you all for joining. Facebook Live. I'll post it. You're listening to the talk.